Hi folks, so welcome back to another lesson. This is going to be our third and final gas law, which is called Boyle's Law. And just like the other gas law lessons, we're going to have a part one, which is theory, and a part two, which is the experimental one. And this one, we're going to cal carry out calculations using Boyle's Law. So we get straight into this one. And notice, out of all the three gas laws, this one has a slightly different form from the other ones. This one is pressure 1 times volume 1 is equal to pressure 2 times volume 2. Pressure is in pascals, uh, volume is in centimetres cubed, so you notice that we're still using the same units uh, for pressure and volume. This one here, temperature is a constant, so we don't need to worry about kelvins at all. Okay, so let's look at how we use this uh, equation. So first of all, another way to say this equation is simply that the product of the pressure and volume before is the same as the product and pressure uh, and volume after if temperature remains the same. And it's really just a fancy way of saying that if you know the pressure and the volume at the beginning, then you can predict what the pressure and volume will be afterwards if you know either the pressure or the volume. So this is why we have one and two. The one represents the pressure and volume before, the two represents the pressure and volume afterwards. And this was um, discovered by a gentleman called uh, uh, Boyle, so that's why we've named it after him, basically. And remember, for this to be true, we have to keep the temperature the same. So let's get straight into a worked example. A balloon has a pressure of 75 kilopascal when its volume is 40 centimetres cubed. The volume was increased to 60 centimetres cubed. Calculate the pressure if the temperature was constant. So again, if you're feeling confident, because you should by now know about the KFC technique, go and try this one yourselves. I will take you through the answers in the next slide. So, as I said to you already, KFC technique, so you write down what you've got. And again, I would hope you'd be able to spot that it's k pascals, which means kilopascals. So to get rid of the k, you have to multiply by a 1,000. The volume are in the correct units, so we're OK. And so we're just looking for the second pressure. And remember, it's told us temperature is constant, so we can just go ahead and use our relationship. P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. Write it down, plug in our numbers. And again, if you're not confident with uh, rearranging it, I would calculate what you can from the equation. So I can calculate this side, which gives me this answer here. And then hopefully, I would hope you'll be able to see that to get P2 by itself, I simply divide by 60. And so I get my final answer is 50,000 pascals. And notice, I don't convert it back to kilopascals. I just leave it as pascals. Don't give yourself extra work. Now, if we look at that, it's still using our KFC technique. However, notice how the calculation is a wee bit more easier because you're just doing multiplications on both sides. So of the three gas laws, Boyle's law is probably the easiest one to calculate. How can they make it trickier for you? Well, let's look at this example. Again, feel free to pause this video and try this question yourself. An ice cube of volume 54 centimetres uh, cubed is squeezed by a paddle of surface area 0 0.4 meters squared. And the paddle exerts a force of 6 newtons. The ice cube's volume decreases to 30 centimeters cubed. Calculate the new pressure if the temperature was constant. So how do we do this one here? Well, first of all, I would hope that you kind of realize, even without doing the calculation, because we've had a decrease in volume, that suggests we must have a decrease in pressure. So that gives you a wee clue as to what your answer should be. Now, again, we use a KFC technique. So we write down what we've got. And hopefully, again, from the um, previous lesson, you'll realize that we don't have the pressure, but we're given the um, surface area and the um, force that's been applied onto by that surface area. So we can do 6 divided by 0 0.4, because remember, pressure is equal to force over area. So that gives us a pressure of 15 pascals. The rest is just what we usually do. Write down our volumes, write down what's missing, and write down our final volume. We can then proceed to use our equation. 
P1, V1 is equal to P2, V2. Plug in our numbers. Again, calculate what we can. And then hopefully, again, you can see that to get P2 by itself, you divide by 30. And that gives you an answer of 27 pascals. So notice how they can make the question a little bit more complicated by getting you to calculate the pressure using this equation force over area. But you've seen this before, it's nothing new. Hopefully you've got enough confidence now to realize what's happening. And then why is it important to understand Boyle's law? Well, one area where it can come in handy is to do with diving. And if you're not careful in diving, you can get something called the bends, or more uh, technically it's called decompression sickness. And essentially, the bends is when you suddenly change the pressure very quickly. So if you were to dive down very deep and then dive back up again, what happens is because you're changing the pressure so quickly, you're also changing the volume of the gases very quickly. And so what happens is that the nitrogen in your blood doesn't have enough time to actually leave your blood slowly. So instead, it forms little air bubbles which it can go through your circulatory system and it can be very, very lethal. So if you do do deep, deep sea diving, one of the things they have to do is to put you something in a decompression chamber. And what that decompression chamber does is it slowly increase, decreases the, the, the pressure until you go back to the normal atmospheric pressure. And so Boyle's law can be used as an example of how to explain decompression sickness.